this film was genuinely funny. Mm -hmm. As of, I laughed the whole time through this film. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of The Gist, where we discuss African cinema and Nollywood movies. My name is Adi. My name is Kayode. And today's movie is the 2016 Wives on Strike. Wives on Strike is a hilarious comedy about a, a group of market women who decide to take matters into their own hands against their husbands in a bid to stir them into standing up for a young girl whom they wanted to protect from the wishes of her own father. Let us discuss. I love this film. Um, I've been hammering in the last few reviews about story progression that there's a way to a story progresses. You you get you when the film opens, and you don't have to follow it in this sequence. But essentially, there should be a an establishment of the status quo, which is establish things as they are. Show a problem. Show protagonists either take on that problem or being invited to take on the problem. And then um, the film goes up through its ups and downs in the, the protagonist trying to resolve the problem, gets to a climax, then there's an anticlimax to resolve and a resolution. Those are the classic M building blocks of story. And a story progresses through all those blocks to get to the end. This film does it brilliantly, mm. very well. You know, um, Omonia Oboli was brilliant in this film she was impressive i loved her acting i loved her waffy accent when she went into proper teaching english it's hard enough directing the film or being leading the the taking the lead role but to do yeah. both and to do both very well you know big shout out to her um one thing that's crucial for me is the fact that it's dealing with a difficult topic um just putting out little girls as wives and you know just just the thought of it i've got two daughters just the thought of it is scary and annoying in equal mm. measure um, but to deal with such a topic with such grace and ease and you know not be heavy-handed is very difficult for most uh, films let alone nigerian films and for her to do it so well i was really really impressed yeah. um this film was genuinely funny mm -hmm. as of i laughed the whole time through this film rib cracking laugh. Of, <laughs> it's really really effortlessly funny yeah and then the last thing i wrote was um this film warmed my heart because it felt genuinely Nigerian. Yeah. One of the things I, I even though some of the films I've I, I've watched recently are quite good, sometimes you always worry, why is all our, all our films have to have English or American <laughs> accents? They always have to be about rich people. The topics, even the topics they deal with are just general topics they could be anywhere. Yeah. So when you deal with the topic of a man cheating on his wife, anybody can cheat on their wife. You understand it? Yeah. And even when it's a Nigerian, maybe it's the way Nigerian men look at women, at least make it that. And this, film's, this one picks a problem Maybe not unique to Nigeria alone, but the yeah. Nigerian context. Yes. You know, and you know, they brought in reality about the Senate and oh no, that was brilliantly done. So, good job. Good job. Yeah. Uh, I say I love the authenticity of the Pigeon English. You, you, you know, they're, they're, they're growing up in Nigeria, there they're, they're some Pigeon English that you hear that you're just like, you know, proper wafi, proper yabin. You know, it, this is not uh, the textbook Pigeon English. This is street Pigeon exactly. English. It, it was really good. Really, it's one of those ones you could get your teeth into and you were like, yes, this is, this is something really good. I said an important topic told creatively. It, it's very hard for you to deal with a topic like this film deals with without you being preachy or beating people over the head with it. And I think it was a good choice to use comedy, but also understanding the genre of what comedy is and using it to its strength. Yeah. And um, I think like when we were discussing earlier that the beauty of comedy is that it relaxes you, that you, you take off your guards. Exactly. Because sometimes when you're watching stuff, sometimes your guards are up and every film is trying to tell you something. It's trying to sell you something. It's trying to preach something at you or trying to change your your thoughts, your thoughts or, your belief or your belief system with this particular film it's an important topic that makes you sit up because after watching this i, I must have spoken for over an hour with my wife like how can this still exist yeah. in in today and how how could you justify it on on, on, on. Anyway, I will, I will not belabor the point, but this this film really did it justice. The yeah. acting was on point. I mean, brilliant ladies, brilliant ladies. Going the from, men too, yeah. Yeah, and the men. Every I, I don't think there was one actor that was yeah. below par. Yeah. Everybody was on average or above. Yeah. Uh, I, it was really, really, really good. Negatives. Negatives. Okay. Um, there were a few. Not. They were not big ones, but they're ones that I, I'll, I'll be remiss if not to mention them. 
Uh, one was the family, Northern family, particularly the father. Yeah. I wasn't convinced it was Northern. Now he's a, a good actor. I've seen him in um, some other films where I was really actually impressed with his acting, but I wasn't convinced it was a Northern uh, a Hausa yeah. man or someone from the North. Um, his courage, there's a way Hausa men are that yeah. the mannerism, just sort of things they do that you. I funny enough, he had the look. He had the physical. His face could yeah. pass as a northerner. He don't impact. I mean, it was like that film that we watched. What was the name of the guy who played the Elsa guy? It was Yoruba. Oh yeah. Oh, that so was convincing. Me. Exactly. Oh, what's it called again? Ah, Not there's a south or something like that. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. He, he, he wasn't convincing as a northerner. Um, resolution was a bit wanting. So there were things that were a bit. You could see them coming. But again, it's hard to call that negative because comedy allows you that latitude. Yeah. Um, then also, I wish they either had a bigger budget or a budget that was good enough to sell me the... So the, the, the whole concept was they started something locally and then it became a global affair. Like yeah. people all around the world knew about it and it became a big thing. I, I was convinced you could you could almost feel like it was, it was a small budget thing. Yeah. And I wish they had the money or the skill set to make it look convincing. That was the only yeah. part about the film in terms of budget that felt like they could have done it better. Yeah. And then the last part, um, item I wrote was, um, okay, so this one I wrote down, give people something to do physically in the scene. So one thing I've progressively noticed in, in, in Nigerian films is we, we like to sit down and talk. It's as if we don't understand how to incorporate day-to-day -day living mm. with with what's happening so that they can talk and express themselves as they're doing things so there was a lot of sitting down to talk i think the men scenes were better the scenes for the men was better because most of them they were at their workplace yeah. or they were at the me mechanic shed when they were doing all they were at the bar but for the ladies it was a lot of just sitting down to talk which felt it felt a bit again was it a major thing to the <clears> film <throat> i would say destroy the thing but it just may lower the standard a little yeah. bit, you know. So, yeah. yeah, it's something that writers should always be conscious of that. Give your actors things to do while they're in the scene. Yeah. A um, couple of things for me. So, there was... Um, they had already established that the main protagonist, which was Mama Ngozi, played by Omoni Oboli, was um, a woman who sold wrappers in um, in the market. Uh, so, she, she sold wares. Um, and there was this scene where her husband wanted to appease her. And he brings home a present. Now, what is it? Rappers. It's <laughs> not like it is here, Trump. Ah! I will be surprised if I don't to do that. <laughs> no, that, that's not something that we do. <laughs> that just was a bit odd. So, um, I, think, I think you more or less explained this, but there was this phrase that kept on being used, which was... Um, um, Girl child. Girl child, yeah. I, I, and I just felt that it was belabored. Um, everyone knows that it's a little girl. There's not a special kind of little girl called girl, <laughs> girl child, child that these yeah. things happen to. It can happen to anyone. And that's the thing. And I think you need to call it by it is because to me that brings more authenticity yeah. to it in the sense that when you say that a little girl, everyone knows I have a little girl, you have mm. little girl. It makes it more that, ah, this could happen to my daughter kind of a thing but yeah. when you now use the phrase girl child it nearly gives a connotation that there are special girls that this happens mm. to and they are called girl I, child. I mean, let us know if if because one of the things we discussed earlier was i was telling i did that i think i've heard that phrase and i think it's the phrase that they used to identify that this is wrong so it's almost like when you coin a phrase like when you say um what's that the girls that got taken away in the north what were they called um bring back our girls yeah no no but what was that a region from um, uh, I've forgotten the region. There was a specific region that, uh, if you mention, it, everybody knows what you mean. Yeah. But there were more regions that girls were taken away from, other than just that. Uh, what is it? I can't believe I've forgotten where, where it was from. But anyway, it was from a, there's a town that or a village that they were taken from. Yeah. Whenever you mention that village, the village became the poster for any time a girl is kidnapped from 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 yeah. from from their homes and by um Boko Haram. Chibok girls. Chibok girls exactly. Yeah. But there were more neighborhoods that girls were taken from. So I think it's that kind of. Phrase, but again, those of you that live locally, let us know if we, it's whether I'm right or wrong in explaining that one. And if I'm wrong, then maybe they should have done that. Um, so Papa Mina was the man who wanted to kind of sell off his daughter. Um, and um, he was a stickler for the tradition of your wife stays at home yeah. kind of a thing. And then towards the end of the film, all of a sudden, the <laughs> wife now says that uh, that uh, I'm sewing clothes. And then all of a sudden, you say, eh, you're sewing clothes. Ah, 
thank God. Oh. You have been yeah, angry yeah, all that's through this. Exactly. You are not going to study a lot like, yeah. please. You will never explain change. Why yeah, does the character that, change? That exactly. there, there had to be a poignant scene whereby there was something that softened in him exactly. in order to accept yeah. that. Verdict? Verdict, easy one. Must watch. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely must watch. This film had too many things good to even <laughs> notice the bad things or the, the negative things. It was such that almost like you had to go look for negative. Okay, you know, how to justify this? I can't just say the only positives. There were some negatives, but this film was so good and what it did well was so good that you forgave all the, all the negative points and for me, the biggest thing of all is showing how to deal with a difficult topic yeah. and to show and to be able to pass your message across with people's guides down. It was brilliantly done. Yeah. To me, I did see quite a few things that were wrong, but it was the kind of film whereby I was trying to justify, eh, maybe the reason why, <laughs> you know, it, it, I mean, it was, it was a, it's a must watch for yeah, me. Yeah. It, it's one of those films that deals with a very hard topic in a very creative way it hits home it's hilarious the acting is brilliant there's not much not to like <laughs> that being said thank you for watching this episode of the gist please head on over to nollywoodbeliever.com where you can find out more about us this film and every other film we've reviewed you can catch us on facebook itunes youtube and twitter thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on the gist Hi guys and welcome to another episode. Learn <laughs> <laughs> more lessons. Hi guys and welcome to another episode. Oh, <laughs>